Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I will briefly discuss what is called the Scramble for Africa, or the phase of new imperialism which comes from 1881 till 1914. And understanding Scramble for Africa is crucial to general postcolonial studies and studies of African literatures and history, but also I think it's significant if we know about it as we read Heart of Darkness from a postcolonial perspective. So let's look at a, a brief uh, videographic uh, description of Scramble for Africa and then I can come back and we can talk a little more about it and its significance for general literary studies but also importantly for post-colonial studies. The Scramble for Africa was formalized in 1844 at the Berlin Conference called by Bismarck. Sixteen countries including the German Empire participated in it and you can look at the map, that's how Africa was divided at the end of the conference. Africa was divided into 50 colonies that each power claimed their own territory. And what was also decided was that, uh, you know, that they eliminated slave trade and Congo, which is in yellow, was given as exclusive territory to Leopold II of Belgium. And what they also decided was to develop a mechanism for conflict resolution. And this is what led to what is called neo-imperialism in Africa. So as you just saw the Berlin Conference, where all of these things were formalized, was called by the German Chancellor Bismarck. And Germany is entering into this game of colonialism after its unification, right? And it's under Kaiser Wilhelm II who has this imperialistic idea. And there are other groups emerging in the general nationalist movement who want Germany to have an active role as a colonizing empire. So Bismarck calls, calls this meeting of the world powers. Most of them are already colonial powers as a powerful empire itself to set up a set of rules, right? Now what has happened is until then Africa was only colonized along the west coast and primarily because of the slave trade, right? The, the Arab slavers would capture the slaves in, in the heart of Africa, bring them to the coast where all these slaver companies had their posts and from there the slaves were shipped to the Middle Passage in the Caribbean and then to the Americas. Now that slave trade of course has died down after 1830, you know, when Britain formally um, illegalizes slave holding, right? But what is also developing is increasingly all these nations are industrializing, need raw materials, and Africa is this immense place of raw materials and wealth. And medically speaking, the Europeans had also controlled some of the tropical ailments that they could get if they went into the interior of Africa. Now, there is no reference here to the diseases they took to Africa themselves. But so these were some of the practical reasons where now they thought that Africa was a prize and everyone was ready to plunder it. But as a response then, as a consequence of that, these powers were getting into conflicts against each other. So the purpose of the conference was to sit down and literally divide Africa amongst themselves. You know, we post-colonialists laugh at it because, I mean, that's what the European mindset was. Here is an empty space in the world, as Marlowe points out. Let's divide Africa amongst ourselves. But say they literally do that, right, so that they don't have to fight each other. Right? And that is how they consolidate their territories in Africa. Other than uh, Ethiopia and Liberia and a small uh, state of uh, the, what, is called, what was called the Mahdi state in uh, current day Somalia, rest of the Africa by late 1880s, early 1900s is completely colonized. And it's crucial to know that because that colonization is 
a form of plunder. Ivory, tin, all the other raw materials are being extracted from Africa, right? Through, sometimes through brutal means, and that is what is underwriting the so-called progress of Europe, of the Industrial Revolution, everything else. That's important to keep in mind. Now, as post-colonialists, of course, we see it as an atrocious act, like right? the division of Africa and this whole colonial or imperial mindset that powers that be can go and declare a place empty and divide it amongst themselves, right? Marlowe in the novel kind of makes fun of that. Remember, he says that he's going to the center, which is yellow. The map that you saw in the videographic uh, part of this video is actually yellow even now, right, when we show it in the past. But there were serious ramifications for it for Africa even after the colonialism ends. And those were the, the, those maps that were drawn by Europeans. They were drawn with a complete disregard to the local makeup of ethnic populations, religion, regional identities. So then as the post-colonial nation states emerge, they roughly emerge on the same lines that the Europeans had drawn, and sometimes you have divided ethnic populations, which is further aggravated because most colonizers pitted one group against the other. So those hierarchies, those enmities also follow the post-nation post-colonial African nation states. So overall, anytime someone mentions to you the scramble for Africa, which is also called the new imperialism or the Berlin Conference, what they mean is this actual meeting in Berlin called by the German Chancellor, where all the European powers, Ottoman Empire, as well as you know United States sat together and literally on a map, divided America amongst themselves, okay? And that is what started the scramble for Africa. Now, it's not just national, okay? Since most of these extraction missions were corporatized and the rights were sold to different corporations, then in so many areas, you know, the act of plunder was being committed by chartered corporations. That was the system in Congo. Okay, Kurtz doesn't work for King Leopold II. He works for a company, right? So early capital then plays a huge role in this plunder of Africa. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. Now, what is also important to keep in mind within the context of Heart of Darkness is that's why, why Marlowe is there, right? He's been hired by a company whose offices are in France, right, to go and ply this steamboat up the river for the people of the company. There was a whole system developed of local administrators, local trading posts, right? And at the Berlin conference, Leopold II somehow was able to convince the participant nations that he has a civilizing mission in Congo and that what he wanted to do was introduce culture and, and save the people of Africa and that that his mission was philanthropic and that's why he is given the territory of Congo as his own private territory that was the only part of this division where a sovereign a king owned the territory under the promise that he will develop it right and that he will take care of the people now actually on the ground as we read in the novel heart of darkness or in the casement report what we find out is that more than half of the population actually perished people were worked as slaves right and no roads were built corporal punishment was common and brutalities were common right and majority of the population died of diseases, of starvation, of sleeping sickness, right? All of these caused by the trauma of being enslaved and put to work, right? So there was no pretense even of taking care of the people whose labor you were extracting or whose country you were plundering. That's why when we read Heart of Darkness, you know, Marlowe, and Conrad can then create this juxtaposition 
between what is happening in Congo, which is brutal and cruel and unchristian, and that gives them kind of a rationalizing narrative for what they would consider the right kind of colonialism, like the way the British do it, ideologically, with efficiency, developing the system. So that is also what Congo comes to do. It rationalizes other forms of colonialism which weren't as brutal as the Congo colonialism was. Right. So I'll be back with more background information about Africa and about setting of Heart of Darkness, but I thought knowing what scramble for Africa was at least a little bit is crucial in understanding Heart of Darkness, but also other post-colonial African literatures, histories, and cultural studies. Uh, you can always explore it further. There are books on it, of course, which give you more detail about the mechanics of how the system worked and uh, the historical accounts of different regions. But this, what I just did, is just a general understanding of Scramble for Africa or the new imperialist phase of colonization of Africa. That's all. Thank you so much. And as always, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer that. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, peace and love.